Watch. Nuclear Africa Chief Executive Kelvin Kem is with us in studio for, well, helping us to understand the nuclear energy agreement that was signed by Rosatom and the country's Minager Minister of Energy, Tina Jumat Peterson. Uh, uh, Kelvin, thanks for coming through. Just to maybe set the scene a little, Nuclear Africa, what does it do? We're a nuclear project management company involved with bringing business and government and numbers together. There's such misunderstanding over nuclear. We want to get if all of that sorted out to lead to the point to which South Africa can now become a world exporter of nuclear fabricated assemblies and components to nuclear reactors all over the world. Right, so you're definitely quite clearly in the <laughs> nuclear camp. Absolutely. I was reading, thanks to Google yeah. Translate, the statement on Rosatom's site. Right. It's very clear. The Russians believe they've signed a contract with South Africa. Correct. The amount is going to be about 50 billion US dollars, right. uh, 10 billion of which will be generated in South Africa. The, the, uh, there's a long quote from our Minister of Energy mm -hmm. on why this is such a great thing for the country. And then we get the politicians backtracking the very next day. What is happening here? Well, what appears to have happened is that the Russians were a bit enthusiastic with the way that they issued the press release. What in fact happened was that at the International Atomic Energy Agency annual conference in Vienna, uh, the South African Minister of Energy signed a technology cooperation agreement with Rosatom. And that is for us to work with each other towards development of various nuclear assemblies. Well, if I read what she's quoted as saying, I'm convinced that cooperation with Russia will bring South Africa the necessary competence to carry on this ambitious program. Rosatom is ready to assist South Africa in establishing a fully fledged industrial sector of world class. That doesn't sound like uh, she no. was, maybe she was quoted out of context, but it's pretty specific stuff. Yeah, it is. But if you go in, if you look at that carefully, it does not say we're buying the Russian reactors. The state of play at the moment is that the government is definitely going ahead with 9,600 megawatts extra nuclear power. That's about th that's three more nuclear stations, each about the twice the size of Kuburg. So this is substantial. The whole world has been watching us for some time now because South Africa seems to be a leader in this. Interestingly, the a previous in? in nuclear at the moment. South Africa uh, is a leader in, in, in nuclear? Yes, in a number of respects, I can tell you. But for example, when Fukushima occurred mm -hmm. back in uh, a few years ago, um, three days after Fukushima, the South African minister at the time, that was uh, Peters, was the only government person in the world who stood up and said, we're undeterred, we're going ahead. And we've had huge compliment out of that. I get regular mails from all over the world, people saying to me, we're the only people with the courage of your convictions to keep going and not to check but it not out. From the and not, not, not from, from the environmentalists, not from the gas lobby, not from the coal lobby, not from the oil well. lobby. So mm. there's, there, there, there are competing interests here. But yeah, absolutely. To, just to bring this back to, mm. to what is going to happen from here, we mm. did have the pebble bed modular reactor, Correct. which we spent billions of rands in this country. We had many scientists working on it. Right. That was scrapped. Yeah, but, but now we bring in well, the Russians. You know, in fact, the, the Pebble Beach should never have been scrapped. It was the biggest nuclear development program in the world. It had something like 2,000 people working on the project. Um, it was huge, and we were right. And unfortunately, they didn't go out and make it clear to the public what was going on. They didn't have the right public support. And to my mind, it was sad that it was closed down. There's still thoughts of private enterprise getting going and, and doing it privately. That's already currently underway. Could that have produced 9,600 megawatts? Yes, it could have, except we wouldn't have done it that way because the pebble bed reactor is about 100 megawatts reactor. That's the about little the guys, yeah. The little mm. guys. It's about the power consumption of East London, for example, one reactor. The one great advantage of pebble bed is it doesn't have to be on a large body of water like the sea. Is it These possible? big ones have to be is on the coast. Is it possible you could dust or the government could dust off the PBMR and reassess it yes. in the light of this enormous amount of uh, money that we're going to be paying the Russians. Yes, well, in fact, after our leadership in the pebble bed reactor, people like the Chinese are currently building them now. So we actually were the... So they're building the what South Africa Yes, innovated. there's a number of people. We, we were the ones that stepped forward and we started opening the path and people have followed behind us. We then sat down and they've now gone past, basically. Um, I'm convinced that reactors like pebble beds will definitely come about. They're small and you can put them anywhere, not near big bodies of water. So they're good for all African countries, for example, and so on. In the meantime, we are currently talking about the new 9,600 megawatts, which is like three new big power stations bigger than Kuburg. And uh, there's three s currently Where identified. Are they be? Well, the, the one is a Tastepunt, which is just a bit south of Port Elizabeth. That's um, conventional wisdom says that's the favoured site, but no decision has yet been announced. Then there's another one called Buntum Clip, which is down further south um, uh, at the bottom of the country, and then the Kuburg site currently is, a, is another site. So they'd have another reactor yes. in, at Kuburg. That's correct. And uh, so right now we have, to, we have to get going with this. And where we stand is that 
the industry and business are sort of wandering around a little bit waiting for some leadership and the government is sitting on the other side saying when are you guys going to show us what we can do are two of those reactors in the western cape province the proposed uh, uh, um, yes because today yeah, the yes. da mm. which controls the western cape right. is having a massive anti uh, nuclear reactor mm. uh, press conference well, as we speak sa yeah, sadly the da is wrong uh, and it's a pity that the da doesn't It'll be know interesting that th they're going to yeah. be reaping the, the whirlwind there. Kelvin, thank you for those right. insights. Uh, I think it's a lot clearer now. There's no, it's not full steam ahead. The Russians jumped the gun, it appears. Perhaps our, our energy minister was spoken out of, taken out of context. Lots more water to flow under this bridge. And who knows, maybe dusting off the PBMR, which this country invested hugely in in the past. It was Kelvin Kem, who's the chief executive of Nuclear Africa.